what is good cloudy people and welcome back to the channel it's your boy bob lamb graduating law school in a matter of two days because i feel like a genius motherfucking Ooh. kanye west with gay fish affairs every day after reading through all of ali Lodi's legal documents as well as the corresponding controlled substance acts of california and the united states of america nah it really wasn't that hard with the use of google and command f to search specific words nowadays but anyway we're going to skip the featured comment of the day in this video considering the severity of the topic but don't worry i probably have another video coming today so y'all get your chances i just don't want my intentions to be misconstrued whatsoever for i am here to give my objective analysis on the truth behind ali Lodi and juice world's relationship and all the conspiracy theories that instigated from his passing late last year so without further ado the truth about ali and juice world a netflix original by baba lamb let's talk about it Okay, so if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're a hardcore Juice World fan, or at least somewhat deeper than just a casual. Therefore, you very likely know about Juice's girlfriend and fiance, as he allegedly proposed to Ali before he passed away, which we can clearly witness with the big diamond on her finger in this picture. So no need for introductions there, and likely the same situation applies to Lil Bibby, the founder and owner of Grade A, Juice World's label imprint, for he has been the lead spokesman in communicating with the fans regarding the most recent posthumous album titled Legends Never Die. I mentioned him too because he has also been roped into the conspiracy theories and allegations somewhat along with Ali. <laughs> The allegations against Ali Lodi began about a month ago, probably even further back to be honest due to Starfire, Juice World's previous girlfriend before Ali, her involvement in the Juice World fan base on social media, but it didn't really start to bubble up until a couple days ago when fans started bringing various pieces of evidence together for stories that will remain a mystery, such as why and how Juice World tragically passed away on December 8th at the Chicago airport given what police found on his plane, in addition to simply just Ali's criminal history and possibly possibly predatory nature as a much older woman sparking up a relationship with practically a kid who just signed a major label record deal worth millions and millions of dollars along with an easily manipulated drug addiction. But with all that being said, in this section of the video I am merely going to recite the most shared allegations and conspiracies, whether the conclusions or facts used with the arguments are true or false, and then in the next section I will critique and correct or verify from my knowledge and research throughout the past couple of days. So the most most viral allegations toward Ali Lodi were hosted in a single thread on Twitter posted by an account named Squirt Reynolds and has since been taken down for unknown reasons, likely from Ali due to threats of defamation. I'm not sure though, although stories are being created left and right on just about every social media platform, wherein uh, Squirt, I guess you would call him, pretty much accused Ali of being a likely suspect in the cause of Juice World's passing, explicitly tweeting, Ali Lodi, Juice World's girlfriend before he passed, is a high profile drug dealer and may have contributed to him passing away, a threat. Then continues on a series of following posts stating, Ali has been charged for the importation of methamphetamine. This charge is on a level that is much bigger than a regular drug dealer. This is moving quantities of methamphetamine from other countries into the United States with values in the millions, with an attached photocopy of her legal documents wherein she did in fact plead guilty to such a crime. On her IG live, she often said how she always had her own money and she had traveled all over the world long before Juice. Looking at the relationship Juice and Ali had, things start looking a little questionable. She is 20 25, why is a 25 year old woman trying to befriend a 19 year old? Well, word around town is that Ali and Juice met through her trying to sell him drugs. Not only that, she attempted the same with Smoke Perp, but never ended up succeeding with her attempts. Even just going through her Twitter, you'll find her trying to get Smoke Perp's attention in a bunch of tweets. This was way before she had any fame or any connection to Juice, with a few screenshots of old tweets replying to Smoke Perp, tagging him, or whatever you would call this. Squirt continues, Juice was preyed on, he was even trying to stay off of drugs, rest in peace Juice, alongside an old tweet from the legend Juice World himself in late 2018 stating, been going through it lately and I'm honestly so close to saying fuck it, but I'ma keep fighting, hashtag drug free. Then proceeds to link some old unreleased snippets and or tracks Juice recorded in the beginning stages of dating Ali as they officially began dating at least social media wise in November of 2018, wherein Juice's lyrics have been used as evidence by fans in attempt to further prove that Ali was the cause 
cause of Juice's death, as she became a steady supply of drugs for Juice World and thus encouraged his drug addiction. In the unreleased track, Hotel Room, Juice raps, maybe it's the love, maybe it's the drugs, maybe it's because my girlfriend is the plug. Whereas in Fireflies, Juice again raps lyrics supposedly about drugs, although already it's a bit of a stretch considering he's comparing love to a drug in this song. The thread finishes off by roping Bibby into the equation by attaching a clip of Bibby offering Juice World drugs in the studio, obviously including him in the causation of Juice's overdose by contributing to his problem of drug addiction. Now as I mentioned earlier, there are many more allegations being thrown around on the internet towards Ali even as we speak. In fact, surprisingly, there are literally Instagram and Twitter accounts that have been created and run for the sole purpose of attempting to prove these allegations and theories, posting all sorts of things including, but not limited to, more of Ali's replies under Smoke Perp's tweets, as well as screen recordings of Ali's lives following Juice's passing wherein they attempt to entrap her by holding her to what she verbally said regarding where she was when the whole incident occurred and what drugs were present at the scene, and comparing them to her testimonies on social media and the official news report. Someone just said, why did you let him take perks at the airport? Did you not just hear what I said? There was no perks around him to even take. Trust me. Because I know where they were. Nowhere near him. If I got a land, I'm a stick it. Baby, let it go and you gon' miss it. Go to school, Cartier, again, do I sound different? And, like I just said, I was in the restroom, and then I came out, held his head for a second. He said he didn't feel good, so I was like, okay, let's go sit down. We sat down, and then he was gone. So, stop trying to say fucking stop. He screamed out my name for help and looked at me. And I went to him and helped him. And did everything I could to try to save him. When I literally just walked back in the bathroom, like, I had no idea what was going on. No cops, no nothing tried to help me, just... In addition to the lives, there are in fact discrepancies between the report written by the Chicago Tribune that clearly stated an agent administered two doses of Narcan, an emergency treatment when opioid overdose is suspected, whereas on Twitter she claimed to have administered the Narcan herself. I have a few thoughts that I want to point out regarding that, but again, my opinions will be reserved for the next section of the video. Starfire's tweets commenting on Juice's death, Juice's previous ex as we discussed somewhat earlier on in the video were even referenced and that she reiterated notions that Ali was predatory in nature upon Juice World explicitly tweeting, I never checked Jared's phone once and Ali was harassing him in the DMs the whole time and eventually he went for it. We all know how that turned out so don't even start with me. She also had some harsh words describing Ali in the DMs claiming, yeah she's so cool, that's why she's a 26 year old stripper who started using a teenager two weeks after fucking smoke perp, groupie stripper users are so cool girls who sell drugs to teenagers as a grown woman to slide in rappers dms are so cool then continues soon after ask her how old she is ask her what her job was when she met jared ask her how she slid in dms trying to sell him drugs insinuating that ali's main source of income before juice world was being a drug dealer that we'll get into soon enough in a separate dm conversation with starfire she again implies ali's predatory nature due to her aggressiveness and large age distance from juices saying i was dating him when he signed actually wherein she was then asked but didn't he cheat on you with Allie and Starfire answered towards the end yes but she was trying to contact him the whole time the last allegation is actually more so a conspiracy theory so take it with a grain of salt before we analyze it later on in the video as it gets a bit spooky something to note before we read the excerpt is that Juice was allegedly and I say allegedly because he apparently had a very very little involvement almost just like an affiliation with the NLMB gang famously known in Chicago. You may have seen and heard references to this exact game from G Herbo quite literally in his Instagram handle, No Limit Herbo, which is the first two words in the acronym of NLMB. But in summary, fans are claiming Juice was essentially being used as a drug mule, as in the rapper with hella money that could help transport the 70 pounds of marijuana that was found in Juice's private jet the same day he passed away in Chicago 
in order to be distributed further and profited from by the higher ups of his label, aka Lil Bibby and G Herbo. And upon being caught, as we all know, Juice was reported to have swallowed a bunch of pills likely to avoid being caught with even more drugs, ultimately ending up in his life being taken. Therefore, the series of events are seen in a group of fans' eyes as Bibby, Herbo, and others who were involved in the underground drug dealing business being the direct cause of Juice's death. And then finally, Allie was linked into the situation wherein she was claimed to target Juice World and date him just so she could get closer to this NLMB gang drug operation and take them down with the feds. After she was believed to be a federal conformant after being arrested for importation of methamphetamine that we mentioned earlier. But to finally continue on to the conspiracy, an anonymous user claimed, okay friends, notice the court document says importation of methamphetamine. That is not only sales or trafficking, that is from another country into the US. I just looked it up. First time offense of importation of a controlled substance, minimum mandatory federal sentences, 10 years. I'm going to post a screenshot. Ali is not just on probation, it's federal. But here's the kicker, people, and I know this is an absolute fact. When the feds get you, you do not get probation unless you agree to work for them instead of other federal crimes, and that will be on big time kingpins. People, Ali was not just a drug dealer in a general drug trafficking ring. Ali was slash is involved in the cartel. She was involved in bringing drugs from other countries over to the US when Deuce's plane was searched and that large weight of drugs were found that was federal. Allie is a federal convicted drug importer. That whole ordeal with Juice would have been her second offense of being involved or even around a federal transportation of controlled substances. She would have gotten 20 years, but she never did the 10 years. Why? Guys, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. In exchange for waiving her prison sentence, she signed a legal binding agreement to participate in quote controlled buys in state charges a confidential informant signs an agreement with a set number they will say you have to do five controlled buys under full surveillance i assure she was slash is paid a large sum of money for her services as well this is not a pretty little joker situation she's associated with huge drug operations slash enterprises you guys i promise you on god himself jared higgins did not die of a self-inflicted overdose he was knocked off i promise you with all my soul now i think y'all would agree that that's enough of the accusations here Let's get into the facts to see if any of this is really true. Firstly, I want to start off by refuting and or confirming some of the quote facts given by the accusers in the previous section. In my opinion, the most significant piece of evidence we can draw from is Ali's criminal history, which is actually referenced in pretty much all of the allegations and should be the most concrete evidence since, well, there aren't really that many facts. Wherein she is claimed to be a quote high profile drug dealer charged with one count of importation of methamphetamine. According to the previous sources, such a crime is warranted when moving quantities quantities of drugs worth millions in US dollars. Not only that, but they stated the first time offense of such a violation in the Controlled Substance Act equates to a minimum mandatory federal sentence of 10 years. And while some of these statements are correct, at least in part, many of this is simply false. Ali Lodi, aka Alice Leon, was in fact convicted of importation of methamphetamine from Mexico on August 22, 2017, about three years ago, wherein she pled guilty to the crime. That is a fact. However, this conviction most definitely does not mean she possessed or was trafficking millions of dollars worth of drugs, nor does it mean she would have received the mandatory minimum federal sentence in prison. For as I just mentioned, Ali pled guilty and was sentenced exactly 30 months in jail which would land her suspiciously at first glance around a March 2020 release which we know she got out way earlier because she started dating Juice World in late 2018 but as with many non-violent crimes and first-time offenders she was likely let out early for good behavior as for the bypass 10-year minimum federal imprisonment sentence these laws in the Controlled Substance Act are really put there to scare criminals into pleading guilty for it is typically the minimum sentence when the defendants fight the case in a trial whereas the judge will strike a deal with the criminal if they plead guilty, also normally reducing the sentence heavily dependent upon the severity of the crime. In Ali's case specifically of importation of meth, the Federal Controlled Substance Act explicitly states 
50 grams or more of methamphetamines, its salts, isomers, and salts of its isomers, such a person shall be sentenced to a term of imprisonment, which may not be less than 10 years or more than life. And I don't know about y'all, but having 50 grams of meth isn't kingpin drug lord Ooh. if you ask me. Rather, her sentence and the facts more so infer that Ali was carrying less than 50 grams, which can be as low as 5 grams, since the ruling states that a case of methamphetamine trafficking involving 5 to 49 grams of methamphetamine, the federal judge must sentence the accused to a minimum of 5 years incarceration for a Class B felony under the Controlled Substances Act. However, this may change at the judge's discretion if the government prosecutor moves for a lesser sentence or if the defendant meets the qualification for a safety value reduction. Therefore, there really is no mandatory minimum federal imprisonment for Ali's specific charges. Not to mention, proving all of the mega drug lord conspiracy theories wrong as she likely had less than 50 grams of meth on her. This should also lay as a foundation of evidence that Ali was probably not a federal conformant, quote, knocking off juice, as she was previously accused, since the crime really wasn't that severe. If she was facing life, then maybe, but she wasn't even facing 10 years, and if she was a conformant all along and Juice World was drug free prior to meeting Ali in late 2018, why would she target him specifically, especially because he was not even slightly involved with the NLMB underground drug ring at that time, and the mere fact that why would the feds want Juice World killed if he wasn't that involved in the drug ring, and even if he was, why would they want him killed because the feds want to make an example of putting someone in jail for life for such a crime, and probably extract even more information information about this NLMB gang. And as for why Ali nor anyone that we know of were charged when the feds busted the massive quantity of paraphernalia and weapons aboard Juice's plane can easily be explained by the mere fact that the plane was leased in Juice aka Jared's name, therefore all the drugs and crimes can be directed upon him solely, and since he passed, the police can't convict him, nor can they pin the many crimes on his entourage since technically there is no way of knowing that Juice didn't do all of this himself without anyone else on the plane knowing. Ali and Juice's other friends' discrepancies in their words versus the official news reports can also be explained once again legally and that they can't really speak too much about what happened publicly or it can and will be used against them in court for the feds can easily be one of the thousands of viewers on their respective Instagram lives. So Ali saying there was no drugs with them could just be a protection against, you know, any federal claims against her or anyone with them. With all that being said though, this does not make Ali completely innocent and in that it definitely was odd that she was much older at age 26 and a grown woman in Juice World's DMs when he was 18 or 19. But then again, it is legal, just a little off-putting. Love does happen in mysterious ways sometimes though, and I don't even know either Ali or Juice World when he was still alive, so I can't even speak on their relationship. The smoke perp thirst replies on Twitter were pretty slimy though to say the least, but y'all know how women be sometimes, men too, when it comes to celebrities. And for all we know, maybe Ali was a bad influence on Juice World. Probably a lot of people in his circle were considering how things ended up without getting him any professional help. But no one can really be blamed for the cause of death, no matter how angry we are as fans. The truth is we weren't at the scene of the incident and as much as it hurts, we have no right to blame anybody for what happened. Now an argument can be made that whoever was responsible for allowing and or convincing Juice World to bring aboard 70 pounds of weed on his private jet that day indirectly took Juice's life due to his impulsive reaction to swallow all his pills when the feds rolled up as he landed. So if Ali was involved in that for a fact, then yeah, let's blame her. Same with the NLMB gang or G Herbo or Bibby if they were involved. But there's no justification that exists for such an accusation currently, and right now, Juice would probably be mad that we're blaming all his loved ones whether you like them personally or not. Ultimately, and I know y'all gonna hate me for saying this, Juice World had a drug addiction that he rapped and sang about even before dating Ali, and once an addict, always an addict. It's technically a disease that never goes away. I've seen it firsthand with some of my friends, so he ultimately made the decision to swallow all those pills that caused the overdose, even if he didn't mean to do so. But in summary, I'm not saying no one is to blame, for there may be an uncracked story that we have yet to hear, and probably won't ever in our lifetime reserve for those involved with Juice to be honest, but since we don't know many of the facts other than the ones I presented, we cannot just go around blaming certain individuals. Let the man rest in peace, 
and only positive words henceforth. So with that, it's your boy Bob Lamb signing off. Let me know in the comments your thoughts and opinions on the situation. Make sure to like and subscribe while you're at it for the latest hip-hop news, drama, and analysis videos, as well as to follow me on all my socials in the description to join the Bob Gang if you with it. Peace out, cutting people. Nothing. Rrr.